Hey, you're listening to Inside North Idaho. I'm Gary Lorette. We are super excited today because one of the things that's happened uh, recently, as we all know, is the demise of Coldwater Creek. Uh, it took a lot of high paying jobs out of the area, but as you guys have grown to know from me, I am an ad nauseum cheerleader for tech firms and firms that decide to move to, to North Idaho. And we have great aerospace with Aeroset, Tamarack, Airtow, Quest, uh, although Quest is questionable, isn't it? It's a, what do they call those? An, um, oh, an, an, an alliteration. And uh, then we have companies like Encoder and Thorn Research and Numex, and it just really goes on and on. I mean, Numex sells all over the world, and what you have are these fantastic companies that find a way to give their employees the quality of life that Sandpoint, Bonnerstory, and North Idaho provide. But these two companies, actually three, that we're talking to today, Xcraft uh, and uh, Kachava and Soda Roadways, are doing things that nobody has ever done before. I can't say that any of those other companies that do business in Sandpoint are unique. These guys are unique. So Charles, uh, and by the way, Charles is, is really a founder of both companies, but going back to Kachava, how did you guys get such a big tax break from the state? Idaho gives nothing away. Yeah, indeed. Uh, you know, so Idaho has been a great place. When we first started the company, um, certainly we were not moving any needle for anyone because it was just um, really an R&D effort. As we began to grow, and more importantly, as we grew and started to serve these tier one brands, um, we found ourselves in a circumstance where we were surrounded by companies who were all in the Bay Area, all in New York. Uh, and or, deep pockets. Yep, yeah, and, and potentially in LA. And the question always came up, where were you from? And the answer was always half pitch and half articulation. So we had to pitch, you know, we're in a little town called Sandpoint, Idaho. It's the northern panhandle of Idaho. Um, it's a, a place where there's a ski resort and a big lake. And we really chose to be there for uh, the opportunity to do what we love and love what we do. Right. And tried to just perfect that to the best chances that we could. And despite all of the uh, real reasons why we thought it was useful, um, we've been receiving and we had been receiving very considerable um, uh, motivation to be somewhere other than Sandpoint. And as we started to unpack that and, and talk about that with um, with folks like the governor and, and with other folks uh, in economic development, uh, they made it clear that they really wanted this kind of company to be here. And they said, we're not just willing to talk about it. We're willing to do something about it. And here's what we'd be willing to do. But we need you to commit in the same way that we're committing. And, and so, you know, we put together something and it really, really made a lot of sense for us. You know, with Micron down in Boise, they can't be the only high-tech game in town. And I, I think that Butch Otter, even though an otter is slippery, is not dumb enough to let that go. Now, you, you didn't just get a tax break and, and have some backers. You also used a crowdfunding resource to get your seed money. Let's talk about that. You know, it's a good point. So we didn't actually do any crowdfunding for Coachella. We did only for Oh, X I didn't know that. Yeah, so it's a weird story. Um, the idea that we are where we are and we've sustained the kind of growth that we have, um, we are completely bootstrapped. We never raised money, wow. which is even more miraculous, frankly. I mean, it's nothing short of shocking. <laughs> I'm so, shocked. I mean, we went from, you know, one person to now, um, you know, 45 folks, and we'll be at 50-some by the end of April, and we've done all of that organically uh, through growth from serving customers. Now, speaking of XCraft, uh, that did use crowdfunding, and, and uh, you guys raised $143,000 seed money. How'd you do that? Yeah, that was on Kickstarter. We put a, a campaign out there, and our goal was $50,000, and uh, ended up raising one hundred forty-three. Let's talk about XCraft. That this is kind of astonishing. Now, everybody, before we get into this, when you think about drones, these little drones that might be delivering packages for Amazon and so on, or even maybe the little bit bigger ones. Before we ask the question, you think, how fast do you think they go? Okay. How fast do your drones go? Uh, it'll do 60 miles an hour. And that's not even the full version yet, right? They can go even faster, maybe? Definitely, the technology is capable of, of much faster speeds. This, you know, the, the initial version we created is called the X Plus One, and uh, it's, it's a hobby version, you know, so it's smaller, but... Uh, and, and you say and hobby version, how much smaller? Uh, it's got about a 32-inch wingspan. 
Okay, so, so it, it's as big as the table that we're at right now. Right. So it could get bigger. It could be, what, 48 inches or... Uh, on, on larger commercial versions, easily be up to 10 feet or, or larger. Uh, I was reading about how the, the future of drones could be even to put up structures and such. Uh, do you guys envision this going in that direction or just having speed as your asset? Uh, for this design, yes, definitely speed is the asset. So the, the capability, really the unique part uh, of our aircraft is that it can take off and land vertically. So like a helicopter, it can take mm -hmm. off and land out of a parking lot or right. something like that. You don't need a runway. But then it also has the speed capabilities of an airplane. How, how stable are these? Uh, they're very stable. It's, it's stabilized with you know gyroscopes and accelerometers. This is astonishing to me. I have to tell you, so if you had a drone, you could go back and forth to Coeur d'Alene with whatever you're delivering in 30 minutes at 60 miles an hour because you're not having to follow the, the road. Right. You're doing line of sight. Uh, I know businesses that would cut off the right leg for that kind of capability. Um, what kind of use do you see the first ones going out into? And then we'll ask you after that, how do you see it evolving? Sure. The, the first use is really uh, for primarily for aerial, aerial photography and that, you know, serving uh, the folks that want to go take pictures of their, their home or they, you know, in, in our case, uh, with our craft, they could potentially follow like a, you know, a car or a motorcycle and get some aerial uh, video of, of the, you know, them racing their car or whatever. Or water skiing. Or water skiing, right. Are you asking? Because I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've seen these fantastic videos of, of movies, and that, that has to be a growth area. With such a large platform, it has to be very stable to be able to carry up larger cameras. It does. Uh, and we have done a little bit of work, actually, for, for a commercial. I don't know if I can give too many details, but uh, yeah, in, in, in this case, we were shooting the perspective of a hawk as it flew through a canyon. And uh, we, were, we were able to, to do that with our with our aircraft. So, um, so imagine the scenario. I just just to put a little bit more light on it. Um, how do you take the perspective of going through the Calabasas Hills from a hawk's perspective? Well, you can strap a, a camera on its neck and hope that it'll it'll fly, or you actually recreate the scenario. And and that's exactly what JD and the team did. It was really really neat to see the kind of things that you can do. You know, through the canyon, up over the edges, with you know all of the expansive views of the central LA basin, it's pretty neat. Now I know that you can find out about XCraft by going to the Kachava website. Is that correct? No, no, no. All okay. XCraft. XCraft.io. Yeah. So uh, this is something that I have to that I really want to see. I want to see some of this stuff. What do you see it evolving into after just that initial idea of using it for photography and video? Sure. There's there's a lot of applications. Um, <clears throat> we see you know. Definitely like search and rescue applications, you know, if you can take off, you know, in some remote location, go fly over forests and cover a lot of ground uh, searching, uh, like power line and infrastructure oh, yeah. inspection. Or trains. Uh, mm -hmm. Trains, yeah. Uh, and there's definitely a lot of, of cases where you would need that uh, vertical takeoff and landing and the ability to uh, fly quickly as you're inspecting. Uh, how much of one of these go for? I mean... Uh... Uh, we're they can't be cheap. The, the current version we're selling uh, for eleven ninety nine on our website. Really? I mean, oh, wait, so that's way cheaper. I had, I had a bigger figure in my mind. So less than $12,000. Yes, $1,200. Oh, my God. Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm, I'm seriously, I was thinking I was thinking in the twenty dollars or $30,000 range. Right. Well, this is, I mean, we're, we're competitive with what's out there uh, for sure as far as this, you know, this size of a drone that, that has this capability. We definitely have, I think, a step up on a lot of the competition because of our, you know, dual use case. Uh, how early do you think you can ramp up to production? Uh, we're looking at uh, delivering for at least our Kickstarter backers in July. That's awesome. Well, guys, let me know. You know, I take a lot of pictures <laughs> for Zab Point and we have quite a reach. I'd love to be there. We've been talking to the founders of XCraft and Kachava and telling us about these great, great companies. If you want to learn more, go to www.kachava.com. And is it xcraft.com? It's xcraft.io. .io. Gosh, I'm not used to these new call lines. Right? <laughs> anyway, if not, just Google these names. I have 19 different articles, and I didn't pull them all up. Uh, very, very cool companies that are being here in Sandpoint, and we're just really proud to have you guys on board. 
Thanks for being on the show, guys. Thanks, Gary. Uh, thank you. We'll be back in just a moment. Technology to a leading company in the gaming industry, and so we chose to do that, partially because of the economy and partially because it was clear that we weren't going to have um, a real opportunity to monetize that platform. So we sold it to a company called Razer, mm -hmm. which is a keyboard mouse company, pretty popular with sure. the gaming audience. And uh, Razer Comms is what PlayExpert was. That is effectively PlayExpert with the Razer brand. So uh, let's go back then even further. How okay. did you get the expertise and get interested in this to be able to know how to even do this? I mean, this is all new. It's, it's very new technology. It's very new software. And it's even new ideas such as data mining. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so... I graduated from school and worked at Oracle for a few years in the Bay Area, and I'm I'm a kind of self-acknowledged uh, data junkie, very um, very interested in the way data drives decisions. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason I was I was uh, attracted to Oracle was just it is a database company, and you know um, there's an interesting opportunity. It's a great stock to buy back in the uh, early, early 90s. 90s. Yeah, exactly. Well, in the early 90s, especially. Yeah, absolutely. So um, working in Oracle, I, I learned a lot. I had a lot of great opportunities as the transition for the internet came about and uh, Oracle was in the transition themselves. And I've always been, you know, I, I was a liberal arts uh, college student, but I've been programming since I was in uh, junior high school. So it was just something that I enjoyed and came natural to me. So we know now what, what Kachaba does and, mm -hmm. and they're a, a mobile app control management company um, do you see other directions that the company could go in? Sure. So we um, find ourselves in a very unique position in that we have our SDK, our software development kit, which is integrated with all of these very, very popular apps. And so, you know, we've got over 2 billion devices under management around wow. the world. Yeah, very significant number. And um, those 2 billion devices are communicating and phoning home all the time. So we're just seeing all this information. And again, we're seeing it in the context of our customers, so we're really giving them actionable insights in what mm -hmm. they can do and should do. When you deal with that kind of scale and you deal with that kind of volume, um, it, it really lends itself to a concept called machine learning um, analysis, which is where instead of looking at the reams and reams of data and trying to, with the human brain, determine how do you even disseminate that? what's going on exactly, to effectively take algorithmic approach to analyze the data according to certain goals. Mm -hmm. And so we recently acquired a company out of Toronto that, and then moved the team out here to Sandpoint. And thankfully, they, they came and they were excited. I think we are single-handedly changing the diversity profile of the town, which, which is fantastic. We love it. <laughs> we think it's fantastic. Um, so, um, you know, we acquired this company and they specifically are a machine learning optimization tech play. And what, so what they do is they analyze reams and reams of data, you identify a goal, and then it gives you a discrete list of rules of what to do to achieve that goal without having to do kind of paralysis of analysis. Right. And so we're literally plugging that in on top of the platform. Our customers now can make more sense out of the data, and I think that's going to be a huge vector of growth for us as a team. You know, the show's been on a long time. We, we were doing the New North Idaho Business Show for 10 years, and back in 2005, uh, we were named the telecommuting <coughs> sm best small town in the United States, and that was by both uh, uh, MSNBC and by Forbes. Right. And then we saw the growth of some pretty high-tech companies like mm -hmm. Quest Aircraft Manufacturing, Tamarack Aerospace, um, e Encoder Products, Thorn Research, although Encoder has been here for 35 years, but uh, these companies, it looked like we were going to have that growth. And then we kind of slowed down a little bit, but I think that was really attributed to the economy. To see you guys come in here and kick butt, mm. so, could you, can I say that on the air? Um, it, it just really makes me happy. Mm. You know, we've been talking about this for a couple of, of uh, I don't know if you see, we have a, a webpage called Sandpoint Idaho Fans. Yep. We had... 43,000 hits on the different things we put out about Kachaba. Oh, my goodness. I know. Who wow. knew? It's like you're making my, my stuff popular. Mm. Guys, we're going to have to take a break. We're going to come back, and we're going to talk about XCraft and some other things about Kachaba. Uh, remember that you're listening to KSBT, KBF 5, 1400 and 1450 AM. I'm Gary Rep, and we'll be back in just a moment. 
Thank you. Impressive. How do you know your timing cues? What are you looking at to know your timing cues? Or are you just I just it? fake it. Okay. <laughs>